Hey guys, what's up? Aru. You know, when it comes to the concept of the Abyss in Genshin, the will of the Honkai, and even the Aeons and the Stellaron to some degree from Star Rail, nothing else can get me going than when the game includes HP Lovecraft's cosmic horrors into their lore. Yes, if you haven't already noticed, Oyo games have always taken inspiration from the unknowable and the indescribable that is, the Cthulhu mythos. To help flesh out and sort of explain what exactly is the Abyss, or the Honkai, or the Aeons, forbid, and all of them, well, I hate to break it to you girls out there, they're all waifus. I mean, they can always be husbandos depending on what Hoyo thinks. But today we'll be discussing the floating tumor named Yogg-Sothoth and how it sums up Tevat's imminent fall and destruction. In Boot Hill terms, Tevat as we know it is fudged in every sense of the word. Anyway, this girl right here is just one example of how that's going to happen. We'll also go over how the power of the Primordial One and the Dragon Lords combined can sort of fend off the manifestations of space itself. Not only that, we'll also tread deeper into other Hoyo games with relations to the Lovecraftian lore and mythos. We're going crazy with the theories here, but just hear me out because this might just explain how the game ends. So first of all, hit that like button, subscribe if your attention has been made into curiosity, and without further ado, let's get started. To simplify how terrifying a cosmic horror such as yogg thought is, here's a general statement that I have for you. Yogg-Sothoth, as well as the other Outer Gods, cannot be killed in a traditional sense. They can be pushed away from our plane of existence, but you can't exactly kill them outright, since you can't really destroy what can only be described as nothingness. They're an insurmountable and uncontrollable shadow that cannot, and I repeat, cannot be comprehended and even more defeated. That's the fundamental concept of the Lovecraftian and Cthulhu mythos. Lastly, the insignificance of humans, mythical beings, and maybe even gods are, compared to the overshadowing level of this mythos. Now take what I just said and compare it to Genshin's Abyss and how self-conflicting Renova's power of death is as a rule, as well as what the primordial heavenly principles might have done to simply protect her precious human creations and the world to a futile effect. This also applies to the will of the Honkai, and even the Aeons and the Stellaron itself. However, in some impossible way, there might be things to defeat it. But with how HP Lovecraft portrays them, they are and should be immortal and unkillable. And I honestly think that Star Rail is Hoyo's outlet for making the most broken and unimaginable entities coexisting without having to worry about power scaling too much. But back to Genshin first, Goisothoth is actually a jumbled version of the Lovecraft and horror named Yog sothoth and Yog sothoth is known as the key and gate, the opener of the way, and the lurker of the threshold. If you haven't already noticed his name, he loves finding his way into things, and is quite apparent in Natlan as well as every crevice in Tevat after the Heavenly Wars, manifesting himself as a mass of glowing orbs or eyes with tentacles. Yog sothoth is known as an outer god within the Lovecraftian lore and is one of the personifications of outer space. In the words of Kuhul Ajao, it is a physical embodiment of dread and destruction, the black pit of despair that will eat all of us alive. And Hoyoverse thought it was a good idea to make him into a her, along with the other outer gods and great old ones in their older games, Gun Girl Z. In some depictions, they also exist beyond dreamscapes. These guys, or gals, are the ancient beings that existed before the universe, and dwell in the gaps between stars and galaxies. Yogg-Sothoth is omniscient and is locked outside of the universe, meaning he can't really appear physically but knows everything in the universe, which again fits with the Night Kingdom and how cunning the Abyss is. But with regards to Genshin's past with the Abyss, we can assume that this is exactly what happened thousands of years ago as well as in the Cataclysm, and it wouldn't be just Yogg-Sothoth and his tumor appearing. You see, there's around 20 plus outer gods that each have unique ways of spreading their existence, and Yogg-Sothoth as well as the Night Kingdom manifestations are quite accurate to the plot of Netlan as well as the Lovecraftian lore and her relations with Gun Girl Z. Yogg-Sothoth holds invoking resurrections and incarnations of creatures, calling them from the ashes and effectively replacing them with a now evil mimic creature. In Gun Girl Z, her abilities are borderline broken, which include changing and recreating reality or just straight up deleting all of existence, and that doesn't even include how much angrier she would be in her white abyss form. In Genshin, we can see these exact resurrections occur when the abyss infiltrates the Night Kingdom and have powers that even the 
Archons themselves can't beat alone. The humans, Saurians, and even Hilly Churls' Abyss Ghosts are actual souls that have been corrupted and twisted into abominations of this cute innocent girl. But Natlan isn't the only place we see evil ghosts of the past. Inazuma also shares the same abyssal ghosts which we can see from the Sakura Cleansing Quest. And we also know from the Kitsune Saigu that she herself spoke with the dark will of the abyss as well. Making the abyss either a force that's commanded by a single entity, an outer god, or worse, a hive mind of multiple outer gods that speaks with a twisted voice. With Lovecraftian mythos, there are actually a ton of other outer gods, great old ones, and even lesser spawns of their own. One of the more popular ones are Cthulhu, Azathoth, and Nyarlathotep. And some of these characters have been mentioned in Gun Girl Z. A character that I once made a theory about was Kana or Janna, literally named after Cthulhu in the game along with their own tentacles and Cthulhu weapon sets. Another outer god is Azathoth, the blind idiot god, who is always asleep and dreaming, the grandparent of yogg Sothoth and the source of all other outer gods. Which is how I thought that there are more other powerful abyss entities apart from yogg Sothoth. In Gun Girl Z, she is also blind and sleeps within the imaginary tree, the origin of life and worlds if you didn't already know. He loves the music of chaos or the sound of noise, as well as creating lovely monsters wherever she goes. Now waking as a thought up would end all of existence since it is said that everything in the universe is simply made from its dreams. Next up, Nyarlathotep is called the messenger of hidden and terrible powers, and serves as the enactor of the outer gods. He dwells, speaks, and disguises himself among the humans using his multiple forms. He is also the spawn and child of Azathoth, and serves his every whim and wish. In Gun Girl Z, Nyarlathotep is quite a bully and symbolizes the earth as an attribute and also has multiple forms. Much like her Lovecraftian lore, she serves Azathoth fully but is quite scared scared and fearful of her. In the same way, both Nyarlathotep prefer to cause chaos and madness over destruction and conquest. Nyarlathotep executes the will of the outer gods in both the earth as well as a place called Dreamland. And speaking of Dreamland, how's Penacrony doing? Dreamland isn't an outer god, but is a place in the Lovecraftian mythos, ruled by multiple gods and basically where reality can be anything that your dreams are. And in Gun Girl Z, Dreamland is both the character and the land of dreams. It sounds simple enough and it also has similarities to how Penacony functions. But this is where ancient names can be connected, particularly Carcosa, the decayed city in the cosmos, and Rulie. <laughs> the <d> <laughs> the domain where Cthulhu sleeps. In Genshin, we have humanity's ancient civilization and Conria, and we also know of Celestia and the Heavenly Principles who have been inactive for 500 years now, both of which we still don't know its true name, its ancient name. We know how important names and words are in the game, so knowing the ancient name of the Principles, which should likely be Fanes, the name of the first human civilization, as well as the truth of Conria's events, would be both a revelation to lore but also likely a taboo and forbidden knowledge of what exactly happened in the past. If you're curious to know about how other games are connected to the Lovecraftian mythos, then in Honkai Star Rail we have the Tidalgos Warp Trotters. This is a Warp Trotter. And this is a Tidalgos Hound. As of now, these cute stellar jade carriers are classified as an interdimensional creatures that are lost in the stars. Not to mention the fact that they're weak and both imaginary and quantum, which poses a similarity to Honkai Impact's quantum and imaginary Honkai beasts. They also bear some sort of resemblance to the larvae of outer gods. Now, imagine what would happen if the IPC could somehow find these little piggies as true forms and their true origins. Another aspect of Honkai Verse is the finality which is present in both Star Rail and Honkai Impact. This was embracing civilizations through war and fighting up until the finality chose Kiana and from my understanding became the new goddess of Earth. And in their latest games and less Zone Zero, the Ethereals as well as the Hollows can be an example of the invasion of Outer Gods or Honkai or the Abyss. For now, we've yet to find out the lore of the Ethereals but I think it's also related to how Outer Gods recreate life in their own twisted forms. I mean, just look at how Ethereals mimic and create its life-like monsters and the Hollow Zero boss, Nineveh. 
Now a little theory I have with Aeons is that since they're interdimensional godlike beings that preside over the universe, then they can be an example of an outer god. They control their domains, they have great old ones being emanators, and they're also incomprehensible beings who created the origin of their paths. Honkai Impact itself and the will of the Honkai in the earlier Hoyoverse games were inspired heavily with Lovecraftian horrors. The only thing missing is Hoyo actually making it a thing that encompasses all of their games officially and then make it so that the Honkai or the Abyss or whatever else is out there into their own path or widen their lore as a faction. And the only faction I could think of that can be related to the Honkai itself is the Voracity, a path that devours everything, drinkers of worlds and originates from the darkness of black holes, which is, well, dying stars. But then again, the Honkai in Hoyoverse's lore aren't just there to destroy civilizations. There is a reason why they send heralds and hershers into the game. And maybe there is also a reason that the Abyss is attacking the vet, and has been its enemy ever since the time of dragons. As you know, the Abyss is a very cunning foe, but not exactly a smart one either. I've mentioned in my previous videos that the behavior of the Abyss is more akin to a classic hive mind alien that just assimilates everything it consumes, and then uses that knowledge or biomass to improve its abilities and proficiency. There is a general form and effect that comes with interacting with the Abyss, but every region has some distinction between each other. One of the more detailed depictions of the Abyss is in Sumeru, particularly forbidden knowledge. Yeah, those eyes and portals aren't just unique to Natlan. Lumeru also has a peculiar looking plant-like abyss manifestation, Marana's avatar, but similar to the most recent abyss enemy, the tenebrous Mimiflora, which if you read its description, takes its appearance because it's adapting the tree-like world that it's invading. This basically means that the abyss has and still is corrupting the ermin soul, even though we technically cured it based on Nahida. This also makes it apparent that the ermin soul tree is indeed underneath the vat and might be much more susceptible to the abyss than the surface. Now, I had an old theory using the silver twig that the ermin soul is near Conria, or is where Conria once created its kingdom. But now it makes more sense that the ancient civilization was once established on the ermin soul's roots. The Night Kingdom was created from ley lines which was destroyed long ago after the war between the Senders and the Dragon Lords. And the Abyss is now constantly invading into the broken world that's full of holes and crevices that they can slide into and adapting and mimicking its life forms. Fontaine has the Narwhal's portal and the monster summons, the Breacher Core that looks like the tumor of Yogg-Sothoth itself, the Melusine and the Aranara that can see the true form and color of everything, the Raiden Shogun cinematic in Inazuma shows the abyss monsters copying and creating yokai abyss manifestations. Liwa's abyss can be shown from the Yaksha cinematic as well as those things from the chasm. And Mondstadt has eyes of the storm which might have also been copied by the abyss, creating eyes of the abyss. Now I won't talk about Elinus or Durin or the five sinners here despite the fact that they're affiliated with the abyss since they deserve their own dedicated video for being intoxicated by the abyss as sinners and human creations. But apart from these abyss invasion patterns and mindless strategies of yogg sothoth each region might have had different ways of being invaded. This goes back to the theory that I've had with who or what exactly the abyss is. You see, if the abyss is in outer space, then the same concepts in Lovecraftian myths might also apply too the abyss, and by extension all of Hoyo vs games. The outer space is finally shown and the fake sky is real, but what you might not have thought about is that these are the possible results of the abyss eating other planets and corrupting other things. And now, Tevat is its current target, or that the angels that were supposed to help the heavenly principles fell to their own greed, either being free or wanting to be gods themselves. And now we've broken a hole in the fake sky, making it slightly more possible for the abyss to invade or whatever else is in outer space, which likely made the heavenly principles create the fake sky to begin with. 
defeating the outer gods or any Lovecraftian horror is not a small feat, but it can sort of be achieved. I say sort of because I'm not exactly sure. But using what's known as a primordial weapon or being faced with archangels is one way. But this is only from the wikis and compiled knowledge. So it's more likely that outer gods and the old ones cannot be defeated at all. Maybe at most they can be repelled to a certain degree. When you hear the word primordial in Genshin, you might think that Celestia can defeat the Abyss. But we've known already from Honkai Impact how the finality works, as well as resetting worlds, which is quite similar to the eras that come and go in the vet. So maybe something like that would happen in Genshin as well. Whether or not the Abyss can be defeated is still a mystery. And even though we can create an annihilation, that may not be enough to beat it outright. Now I honestly think that the principles is an inspiration from Kiana and that she's protecting Tevat from the Abyss by creating the rules and laws that civilizations will rise and fall. Or that maybe the Abyss is a new threat that's different and maybe worse than the Honkai. And there we go, Yogg-Sothoth and the Abyss, the Outer Gods, HP Lovecraft, and its relation to all of Hoyoverse's games. I've honestly been waiting until Hoyo makes at least one or two Cthulhu-related names since the Sinner and Sumeru, and now I can splurge as much of the Lovecraftian horrors as I can into Genshin. Now, the next video is probably going to be another Cthulhu one, or maybe a dip into the fake sky and the main story. But anyway, that's gonna be it for me, so I'll see you guys in the next video, yeah? As always, like, comment if you enjoyed, subscribe and hit the bell notification for more of my ramblings, and stay mad theorists. Bye!